Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Faith. I'm an HR professional based in Toronto, Canada. If this is your first time here, what have you been waiting for? Anyway, you're welcome. Please use the subscribe button down below and also click on that bell notification button so that when I post a new video, you will be the first to know. And if this is not your first time here, thank you for returning. I am so glad that you're sticking with me. So guys, guess where I am? <laughs> I'm somewhere at um, Confederation Park here in Kingston, Ontario. It's such a beautiful place. So amazing. I mean, I just did a tour. I'm going to do a vlog on, on the city. So watch out for that vlog. Anyway, down to the content of today. So today I am going to be speaking about the proof of funds. If you haven't watched my video, um, how to relocate to Canada, I'm going to link it up here because that video is going to give you a good foundation for what I'm about to talk about. So now the proof of funds, of course, this is one of the requirements um, for when you apply for an express entry program. Now specifically, you would need the proof of funds if you're applying for the Federal Skilled Worker Program. You will need it if you're applying for the Federal Skilled Trades Program or the Canadian Experience Class or if you already have a job in Canada. So you will need it for any of those. Now, what is really this proof of funds? As the name implies, obviously, the Government of Canada requires that you provide evidence that you have the required funds to take care of yourself and settle in when you come into Canada. Of course, they don't want you to be a liability. Who wants that? So this is something that you will need to show um, to the government of Canada. Now, the proof of funds depends on your family size. It varies, of course, the larger your family, the higher the funds. As at the time of recording this video, um, the proof of funds for one, for a family of one, when I say a family of one, I mean just you, <laughs> is 13,213 Canadian dollars. And this was updated in July of this year. So every year there are changes to the requirements. You just need to keep up um, with everything. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to link in the description box. Um, uh, I'm gonna put a link where you can see all the um, required funds based on the family size. So if you have if you have a you know a smaller family now, now is the time to get on it because the more the kids, the more the proof of funds. And mind you, they are referring to just your nuclear family. So it's just yourself, your spouse, and kids, no other family member. Now let's talk about what you need as proof of funds and you know, I'm going to be giving you a few other tips. So one of the things that you can use as your proof of funds, obviously, is your savings, right? Now, what they require you to even show is a bank statement, a six month, a six month window bank statement showing your, you know, obviously your funds for that specific period. Now, it doesn't, mind you, you don't have to use it from just one, it doesn't have to be a letter from just one particular bank. It can be from, you know, a few other banks if you have multiple accounts okay so that's what you need to show to the government so now if you have your savings ah, hey, I'm all, I'm all over. <coughs> what I mean is people that have a lot of money if you have that money readily available why not you know that is what you can use all you need to do is get that letter from the bank and you know get the the the, the bank statement showing that okay you have this funds that's fine another thing that you can use as proof of funds is if you don't have the money yourself just you you can combine funds with your spouse um, my husband and i did that when we were relocating so you can combine your funds all you need to do is show a, a letter of explanation an loe now that letter of explanation is where you need to put everything that um everything that you need them to know right so if you're combining funds that is where you would explain the different accounts the reason why you have different accounts and how much is in each account that totals up to that um, proof of fund okay that letter of explanation can also be used for several other things in our case I think when we were relocating I think my name was a little my name on some certificates were different like I just used it for everything <coughs> all the explaining that I needed to do um, as it related to my um, express entry application so but in this case specifically you can use it to explain the different accounts that you are showing to them now another thing you can use as well are treasury bills or investment certificates 
uh, mutual funds, you can use that as your proof of funds. Then I think the other one I will talk about is the pensions. So if you are from a country like Nigeria, if you're relocating from somewhere like Nigeria, um, you can use 25% of your pension funds. Now, for those who do not know, you're actually eligible to 25% of your pension funds. If you've been out of a job, a kid just ran past. <laughs> So anyway, uh, that's what you see when you're recording in the park, right? So anyway, he was such a cute kid. Back to the content. So um, I think he's coming back. <laughs> okay, no, he didn't pass. So I'll just continue. So what you require, um, what? Now he has, he has made me lose my train of thought. He was just too cute. Um, I think I was talking about the pensions, right? So for those um, that don't know, I'm going to link my video on how you can get 25% of your pensions. I'm going to link it up here because I did a video explaining that. So those funds you can actually use as your proof of funds. I've not seen anybody that used it though, I must be honest, um, but I've heard that you can actually use it. Of course, not the 100% of your um, pension. So if you have 10 million in your pension account, obviously it's not 10 million you're entitled to, you're entitled to just 25%. And really, it's only if you're out of a job for more than four months. So maybe you might need to call your pension fund administrator in order to get information on how you can use this as your proof of fund. Okay, so now that I have talked about everything that you need to, that you can use as your proof of funds, I'm going to go into the other section, which is what you shouldn't use as your proof of funds. And I'm going to be giving you a few tips. But before I do, if you like this video so far, hit the like button. And of course, please subscribe to my channel using the button below. So what are you not supposed to use as your proof of funds? The first one I will talk about is assets that are not easily liquidated um, or is that the grammar assets assets that you cannot easily liquidate now what i mean is if you are one rich kid omar babalowo and your father is a landlord that has 10 houses i don't know in some fancy area you can't use those houses as your proof of funds right because let's be honest how long does it take to, to liquidate to actually convert a house to cash it takes a whole lot so the government of Canada is definitely not going to accept that as your proof of fund. If you want, sell all the houses and then have the actual cash in your account. That is the only way you can use it. If you have a fancy car as well, maybe you drive like a, an Escalade or one of those very cool cars, that's okay. You know, but you need to actually sell the car for you to be able to use it as your proof of funds. That is totally not going to work. The next one is you cannot use um, a bank account in someone else's name. I mean. That goes without saying, right? It doesn't even make sense. So obviously any account that you are putting forward, any bank statement that you're putting forward has to be a bank statement in your name or in your spouse's name. And remember, like I said earlier, that is where the letter of explanation comes into play. The other thing you cannot use are things like, you know, jewelry valuation, uh, valuations, because I've heard people say, oh, you know, I'm just going to value all the gold I have and all the diamonds I have. And then I'm going to bring that certificate or something and say, well, I have gold worth this amount. They're not going to accept that. So auntie, if you want to use all your expensive jewelry or all your gold, please sell them off, <laughs> sell them off and get the money and put it in your account then we know that you are ready to show something as proof of funds. Then the other thing you cannot use as well is, well, the government of Canada has said that you cannot borrow money, that you must not borrow money. But Will you keep quiet? that's all I'm going to say on that. All I'm going to say is can, in Canada, the cost of living is very high. So obviously you need your personal funds if you are relocating. Now, let me talk about the tips um, that I have for you. One of the first things I will talk about is starting early. Okay, start gathering your funds early. Um, and I'm saying this because I'm also talking from experience, right? You don't want a case whereby it is time for you to now submit your documents and then you are now scrambling. And also, if it's something that, I don't know, maybe you have some huge fund coming in from somewhere, or maybe you sell off an asset, right? It will make sense to have that kind of amount just hitting your account bam, like that. Let me explain. If you're someone that earns maybe say, I don't 300K per month. If you're doing a six month bank statement, so January, February, March has three, 300K as you know, 
entering in. And then all of a sudden, three point something million just enters in April. That doesn't make sense. It's going to be a red flag. And that's not the kind of bank statement you want to show as your proof of funds. So if you are going to sell off one asset that is going to bring in one huge amount, try and do this months before so that the bank statement that you are showing, in fact, if you start the bank statement from, if you know you're going to submit in December, start it early so that what you are showing will just have, say that um, 5 million already, 5 million naira for instance, um, already and then you know that okay, you know some money is just coming in randomly, randomly but don't put a statement that is going to be a red flag, they track all of those things, so which is why I'm saying start early to gather your phone so you're not running helter skelter the other thing I will talk about is try and keep things simple, um, you know in my case, yes, like I said, I had my husband and I had to combine our funds and all of that. But to be honest, thinking back now, why stress yourself? Like, just keep things as clean as possible. If possible, just use one person's account. So move the funds early enough so that it doesn't reflect in the bank statement. And then let it just be in one person's name. Sometimes with all these sort of applications, the easier or the cleaner you keep your stuff, the better for you. Then the next thing I'll talk about is don't move your funds until you land in Canada. In fact, until you get into the, your, the parlor of the house that you're going to stay. Do not move your funds away from that account. People have said, and it, hasn't, it didn't happen to me or it hasn't happened to anyone that I know, but I've heard that at the airport, sometimes when you get to immigration, they might just randomly say, bring out, you know, show us your proof of funds. And by that time, <laughs> Well, I don't know, for people that maybe borrowed the money or, I don't know, got the money through some funny means. Maybe you've moved the money back to the owner. They now tell you at immigration, at, at immigration when you've already gotten into Canada, that, okay, show us your proof of funds. I hear me to me, but me. You are now stammering. May that not be your portion. So please, don't move that money until you enter inside the house. That is the advice that I have for you. And then finally, um, the other advice I have is that do not move everything in cash because there's a tendency to say, okay, well, you know, it's in CAD, let me just have it in cash and then move everything because there's actually a limit to the amount of cash you can bring into the country. Okay, at the airport, um, the, the officials will ask you, if you're, if you're bringing in more than $10,000, you need to declare it when you get into Canada. If you don't declare it and they find out, it's going to be an issue. So, meaning there's that cap as to how much you can bring in as cash. So, you know, leave it in your account or whatever it is that you want to do, but make sure you don't bring it in as cash. So guys, that is basically all you need to know about the proof of funds. I know someone is already excited. So, and I know someone is already rushing to start gathering their funds. Please do, please do, please do. It is very important that you start early. Um, like I said, this is a series, so I'm going to be doing more things about relocating to Canada. So stay tuned. More videos coming your way. More vlogs as well coming your way. And um, if you like this video, you know, hit that like button. Also share this video. It's very important. People need this information. And subscribe to my channel. So from me, myself and I at the Confederation Park, I will see you on my next video. Bye, guys. Important for them to see who's the man behind the camera. Is it rolling already? They're rolling. Oh, okay. Which kind of movies are we supposed to see this? It's cold. Uncle, why are you in my video? Eh? Why are you here? Please, can you find your way back? <laughs> exactly. Ah, ah. He wants to just be stealing my shine every time. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs>